Hey guys, what's up? This is Ruben here, here at Marketing of Lead, and Dr. Lau is also on this video. And today, I want to announce that we're giving out a giveaway for the first ever giveaway that we're doing in uh, this year. So what we are planning to do at Lead is to give a giveaway every quarter of the year. Uh, and this means we are giving out softwares, giving out tools, depending on what you want. You can feel free to let us know what you really want to see us giving out. Uh, let's put them down in the comment section below and we'll be happy to see if you can do that or not. Now, for this quarter, we are giving out audiobooks, five audiobooks in data science and marketing, which is our favorite books at Lead, one of my favorite books and also Dr. Lau's favorite books at Lead. And um, the reason why we are giving out audiobooks is because we believe in audiobooks so much and really audio is the future of uh, learning, right? And that's because we can fill up our gaps. We are, when you're driving, when you go back, going home from, uh, from work, you have that free ample time in jam, you have free ample time when you're traveling and that's the great, greatest moment to actually take up an audiobook, listen to it on your mobile phone, on your desktop or on any device that you have, right? So this audiobook is going to come straight from Audible. Audible is a company under Amazon and they give and they provide like a whole library of audiobooks. But we're going to select this five audiobooks, which is our favorite audiobooks. And I'm just going to show you what we're going to give up, how we can enter the giveaway um, and yeah, talk about the books that we're going to give out. Let me share my screen. So here you go. This is the link or the website you can go and get the audiobook. So the way to join this uh, giveaway, again, this is all free, right? And we're going to pick five winners from this and the winners will be picked based on a random basis. But the more entries you have on the giveaway, that will give you a higher chance of winning this um, giveaway. All right. So all you have to do to enter is just go on this page here. You can go through the books that we're giving out by clicking on the links here to read about what they are. We're going to explain this in a moment together, Dr. Lau. And well, you can just put in your name here. For example, my name is Ruben and my email is, <clears throat> let's say, I guess I have to go, go and censor that out, but it's okay. So let's enter that, <clears throat> right? Oops, I'm already subscribed. My gosh. So I'm going to put in my the lead. Okay, put in your name and also your email. And the next thing to do to get more entries is to basically to um, reshare, basically reshare. I got I subscribe a lot of my emails to get these things tested, right? Let me go. Okay, so once you set up your, your email, all you have to do is basically just um, <clears throat> reshare the link, there you go, here, to reshare the link and basically you can get more entries by doing just that, by sh you know um, sharing it to Facebook, sharing it to Twitter, LinkedIn or even coming down to these actions here by subscribing to our uh, YouTube channel or subscribing to our latest podcast series called Cerebro by Lead on Spotify, you'll get more entries and the more entries you have, right, the more, uh, the higher chance to win this giveaway. All right, so let's go go into you know explaining the audiobooks uh, and, and talk about the audiobooks that we're giving out and why we choose to give out. Maybe we can start off with Dr. Lau explaining uh, what's in Big Data in Practice by Bernard Mar. Okay, so the very first book that we're going to talk about is Big Data in Practice by Bernard Mar. Now, Bernard is a best-selling author. One of uh, he, He's also one of my friends um, and he does a lot of keynote speaking, strategy performance, consulting, analytics, KPI, and big data. So for those of you who are familiar with, with my talks, right, I usually talk more about data science rather than talk about big data because big data is really just a um, relative measure. So when you have small data and then the other data that come too fast, too unstructured, and also the volume is too huge, then it's considered big data. A lot of people mistaken big data as only huge huge data. And Bernard also wrote the other two books like uh, Business Use of Big Data and also uh, Data Strategy. Now in this particular book, Big Data in Practice, he gives us uh, quite a number of case studies from different industry, from tech startups, oil and gas, banking, healthcare, to even like automotives. So for example, uh, in retail, he talks about Walmart, right? How big data is used to drive the sales of the supermarket. Now many of you might have heard of the, the story about a, a 16 years old girl uh, the parents found out that she's pregnant before she uh, she told the parents uh, all because of the use of data and this is um, uh, in this book he will talk more about how big data is used to drive supermarket and if 
you are interested in things like X Files, um, those things like relativity theory, you must have heard of this organization called CERN, C E R N. I think it stands for uh, European Organizations for Nuclear Research, and it is famous for its mm-hmm. hadron collision. So in this book, he will also talk about. Um, how they use data for hadron collisions and there are other uh, tech startups like Netflix, Linkin, Microsoft, how they use data uh, to recommend programs, movies that you want and also how Linkin use it to uh, power their social media. Now for the automotives, we talk about uh, how big data is used to drive success in manufacturing, in particular Rolls Royce and how Shell use big data to help them to look for uh, what they call it to increase the yield of their their oil 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 mining and for sports cars they talk about lotus f1 teams okay i have talked about a lot of things in, in different things like sports you know women's cycling team uh if you you want something that's more towards your daily life then you have to pay extra attention to chapter eight now chapter eight is a case study about butchers so the uh, Pendleton's butchers they work with a big data consultant. So usually big data consultant, they will ask you to install, you know, like BI solutions, uh, big data analytics. But this particular consultant wants them to install a simple footfall traffic sensors in their store windows just to monitor the impact of the display message. So you know those LED message board, right? So what it's just like A-B test in digital marketing. So when you put up a a special message here, it it attracts more people to stay and and read the message. But some other messages, people just ignore it and walk past. So what are the type of messages that stop their their potential buyers and how many people came into the store as a result? So we use that to actually measure brick and mortar shop conversion rate. So with this information, they're able to refine their display messaging based on what sort of interest, um, what sort of stuff that the customers wanted. Now, uh, many of the big data books out there, they are either too technical or too business-ish. Mm. Uh, like that those conference that you go, right? They talk about high-level stuff. They did not give you any details or the implementations or the technical insights. But this book is slightly different. It covers sufficient technical aspects. It talks about the types of technology that they use, like NoSQL, AWS, Hadoop, and the types of data that they collected and analyzed. And it they includes many different references and case studies also. So in a nutshell, you will definitely find something that you can relate, whether you are you are as a businessman related to your current business or if you are working right you can always find something that's related to the industry that you are currently working on over to you Ruben all right so this book sounds like something uh great or useful for people who are not technical who wants to get into you know big data and also data science and understand how it works inside the industry as a whole and when i think that's also i've read the summary that uh there's also great examples from uh, companies like uber yes. and some really amazing companies in there correct so okay, so, so I- if you <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oops. Go ahead. And, uh, and also, if you're a technical person, you can make use of this audiobook to help you to understand how can those technologies that you have already learned apply in a business context. Right, right, right. I see. Okay. So if you like to get that book, a whole of that book, right? All you have to do is basically come to this page right here, put in your entry, and to be to get a higher chance of winning this um, book, you can just, you know. Share, share the link here and you know raise up your current entries that you have. Okay, so that's the Big Data in Practice by Bernard Ma. Again, as a winner, you get to choose one of the books here. Um, any books at all. So if you're a winner, there's going to be five winners in this. As a winner, you can get to choose any book and we'll send you the book free of charge. Okay, I'm going to talk a bit about Contagious by Jonah Berger. I think that's how we pronounce his name, Jonah Berger. <laughs> okay, so this book is about social media, right? And why some things become viral on social media or on the internet. So turns out behind all of um, everything that's gone viral on the internet, there's a certain science to it. 
And this book explains the science behind why things go viral. So if you are a business owner or a marketer trying to create content or trying to create something to go viral online with your business, this is a book that you want to actually pick up. And I'm just going to share very quickly about the formula that the author actually put inside this book. It's called the STEPS framework that stands for S D E. PPS. I'll just go through very quickly that with you. So the first S stands for stories. You know? So one of the reasons why things goes viral online is because of the stories that content holds. So with a powerful story, uh, a content is more likely to go viral online. All right. T stands for trigger. Now some content would trigger you um, a reminiscence from the past. Maybe it triggers you to think about the, the events that happened when you are a five-year-old kid. Right, so those kind of contents, those kind of content that trigger something, it could be a long time memory, it could be triggering your anger, it could be triggering your emotions. Those kind of content also goes viral because people share those kind of content. Now the next one will be E. E stands for emotions. Content that has a lot of emotional value tends to go viral because people like to share things that are very emotional to them. Now think about things like those um, Thailand. Uh, Thai advertisements, which are very emotional. People share that because it's very emotional, right? You get an idea. Um, and if you can name some, just go ahead and name some, right? The next one, P, stands for practical value. People share things that has a lot of practical value. For example, four o'clock in five seconds. Now that's going to give you some value and that's why you want to share that kind of content to make yourself look smart in a way, okay? So that's, that's funny. The next P would be public. Public would mean if people that I admire and I like are sharing something, I also want to share something, right? For example, if people share this news about uh, a political scandal, I also want to share that news because I want to be in the public, right? I want to be known. I don't want to be, uh, you know, I want to play my part in public. So P for public, right? And the last one will be social currency, all right? Social currency, now people share things online because of social currency. Think about things like buying um, Starbucks, for example. When I buy Starbucks, I feel good. When I share a picture of that Starbucks, now that's social currency. It shows people and people will say, oh, Ruben is someone who can afford a Starbucks coffee every day. Something like that. So that's social currency. So, so these are the steps to why things go viral online and how you can use these steps for your business to make your content that you create go viral in a way. So that's Contagious by Jonah Berger. Quick question, Ruben. So you, you, you the the framework name is steps. Does this mean that we have to follow the, the six steps in a sequence or these are just the components within the frameworks? Uh, that, that's, that's a good question because uh, I've gone through the book many times, in fact. Um, you don't have to actually follow the sequence, but sometimes a certain content may have one or two um, one or two elements in one content. So a content could have the element of emotions plus practical value. It doesn't have to be only just one. It could have two or three in this one content itself. So yeah. the more you put it inside the content, the more your content might go viral. Yeah, very actionable books, right? Yeah, yeah, it is a very actionable book. Uh, you can pick up steps from there and apply immediately on your uh, on your business because it has all the different types of uh, case studies inside as well. Very yep. easy to read. Okay. Okay, and uh, I'm going to go to the next one. Um, <clears throat> the next book, Naked Statistics, Stripping the Dread from the Data by Charles Whelan. Maybe Dr. Lau, you can explain what's inside this book and why people should go and get this book. Okay, sure. So Charles Whelan. Charles Whelan is... Uh, is a is an author uh, very famous for writing naked books okay he has authored naked statistics <laughs> naked economics and naked money now the reason why i pick naked statistics of course i'm a data scientist and we teach data science right and a lot of times when when i was students when they first started data science apart from understanding programming the other things that trouble them is like oh dr Lau, do i have to learn statistics or do i have to learn mathematics these are probably one of the subjects that you you know you hated the most during your high school that's why i don't blame you i'm in the same shoe as well so the aim of this book is to make statistics easier to understand by layman so uh, in high school when we talk about statistics it's all about what mean mode medium mm -hmm. average numbers and uh, when we talk about probabilities it's always like drawing blue balls and red balls and this book gives you a lot of counterintuitive insights that you have never heard before now for example 
when you look at performance data, right? Uh, usually when you look at the reviews, for example, you are looking for the hospital. So you have to look at the ranking systems based on uh, the the doctor's reviews. Then, especially in this particular era, people are people talk you into believe in data or into those things that are produced by data right? the reports produced by data so in this book he has a special advice for you is to uncover what is the easiest way for doctors to game the systems by uh, changing those numbers and what they do is they avoid treating the sickest patients okay meaning that if you are heavily in mm-hmm. sick they choose not to treat you because that will affect fact they are performance very easy to understand right and another thing that i found that this book is very useful because it helps me when i teach data science i teach data science to business people i teach data science in universities and to general public as well when we teach students with case study no matter what right there must be some people that don't really understand every single bit of the context and this book explains those complex concepts in a very easy understanding manner give you another example in one experiment he found that okay this is very important you have to listen carefully and male fruit flies are more likely to get drunk if they always see the same female fruit fly okay (laughs) sounds very familiar right (laughs) okay Uh, Rupert you chuckle so let me repeat again the 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 conclusion that he found from analyzing those data are male fruit flies are more likely to get drunk if they always see the same female fruit fly so in the book he actually detailed how he carried out the experiment and it's not a gimmick he he certainly show you that how he proves that male fruit flies are more likely to get drunk literally drunk uh, is not those things like just spinning around no so i'm not going to tell you you have to win the competition and then you get you get to listen from the audio book now quoting the author again he says that most of the books out there only serve as a cookbook right it teach you how to uh, assume that you already know the ingredients and you you know how to pick the ingredients you, uh, you all you need to do is is to cook and prepare the materials but this is not the case like a lot of the data science courses and books out there is they assume that you know you come to this course you go to this youtube video they assume that you already get the data the data is clean but what happened is we I, I always have this saying, right? Garbage in, garbage out when you are doing modeling yeah. and analyzing data. Now, what happened is when the data that you receive is is not clean, just that when you, the, the cookbook teach you to buy a fish from the market. But what happened is when you bought the fish, the fish is rotten. Or how do you pick the fish from the market? This is usually not taught in any of the cookbook or recipe, right? Uh, Jamie Oliver knows that well. Mm. So they only teach you how to use the data when you have the data. So once again, I highly recommend this book to anybody who loves to explore more about data science and you want to understand how people actually use data to manipulate your mind from politicians to healthcare to surgeons to public listed companies okay now it covers many of the statistic concepts as well for example p-value regressions uh, i'm not going to tell you too many uh, concepts <laughs> of that but i leave it to you to find out yeah now as i always say if there is a system you can always hack it so find out more from this book right i, th- I think what's I- what's interesting is also um taking out insights from the data that uh, he has laid out so there's there's so much data around us but how do we visualize and also take something out from data exactly okay now the third book that we no this is the fourth book already sorry the fourth book that we're giving out is this is marketing by seth godin now seth godin if you do not know already is one of the top uh top leaders in marketing but the way he th- thinks about marketing it can be very different from a lot of digital marketers these days and um, currently i'm taking the marketing seminar course by by Seth Godin as well and this book is more like a uh, a summary of that course that I'm taking and I'm going to share with you a little bit about uh, what's inside this book and what's behind this book right so in this in this book in, in this is marketing by Seth Godin he explains that marketing is about creating change when you're doing marketing so the job of a marketer is to create 
changed. What kind of change, for example, if you're doing marketing, you are changing the mindset of your of your potential customers into you know buying your product and the belief into you. So that's one kind of change. The kind of change you're doing also is to change your internal company, um, you know, how, how they work inside your company and why would they buy into your marketing strategy. So you're actually creating change. And when your product gets sold to someone and they consume or use a product, they are also changing themselves. So effective marketing is about creating um, great change, right? Now, the book also talk, uh, tells you to become a thought leader, how to become a thought leader inside uh, the world we are today because it's so messy right now. And today, we, just using a computer, we have the whole white world in front of our fingers. Now, it's how we actually utilize that and take advantage of that. Now, another thing that, that you may find in this book is this book is more about self-reflection. It's about how you can look into a mirror, reflect on your business, ask questions towards yourself, and then come up with ideas and answers to move your marketing forward. You won't find things like, oh, how to do a Facebook ad inside this book, how to do step-by-step uh, -step stuff. No, it's more of a reflection. It's more of a bigger picture thought process of doing marketing in today's um, messy, digitalized world. So yeah, that's This Is Marketing by Seth Godin. All right, and uh, to move on to the last book that we are giving up, I think this one can be explained by Dr. Lau and also myself. Uh, this is the 80-20 principle by Richard Koch. I think that's how you pronounce his name also. Now, it basically says that 20% of your efforts bring 80% of your result. And this to rewind a little bit, right? This is founded by uh, Pareto. His name is Wilfredo Pareto, if you Google it, right? So Wilfredo Pareto is a gardener, right? So what he noticed and how he came out with this rule is that he noticed that 20% of the peas, pea pods in his garden uh, produces 80% of the amount of peas. So from that, he went on to research on a lot of different things and he found out that most of the time, it doesn't have to be a 20-80%, it can be a 15-85% um, kind of thing. But most of the time, 20% of your effort in something would bring the 80% of your results. Now, what do you think about this uh, this principle or this Pareto law, Dr. Law? So most of the time, I think 80-20 uh, rules or principle is something that people has been overusing, right? Anything that you mm. ask people, they say, ah, oh, you know, just follow the 80-20 rules. Just, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think Gary V also talks about it, that like the 79 and 21. But this is actually... <laughs> I, I wouldn't say it's just a principle or a rule. It's almost like become a law already. It's like a rule is meant to be banned, but a law is not supposed to be changed. So what I love about this book is that it has, once again, the five books that we are recommending here is it gives you a lot of use cases. It might not be directly relevant to what you are doing or what you are currently doing right now, but it's definitely some of the use case you can correlate or you can relate with things that has happened and you can apply it. And, and Another thing that I find very useful of uh, the five books that we are recommending here today is it's not those non-fiction books that you know you you read it and then it expires within like the next three years or five years. Those are more on the the knowledge or more current type of books. But these sort of books is like you can always listen and listen again. You might not want to re-listen to the entire book all the time. But uh, for example, like Seth Godin's his very famous book Purple Cow. From time to time, I will still read it uh, a particular chapters to understand then what is he trying to to tell us same thing for the 80 20 principle so and i think another thing that people miss out when they talk about 80 20 principle is they use it more as a slogan rather than they follow the principle and see how we can use it in the systematic and practical way and to me right uh, I'm more interested or I'm more intrigued is if something that I do, it doesn't go 80-20, it's like it becomes 50-50. Then I'm interested, I was like, hey, is that, does the data tell me something else? Am I doing something right or is that some outliers? I think very interesting book. Yeah, and, and for those of you who are, you know, thinking of actually optimizing your time, this will give you uh, a good thought process about how to maximize your time and how to use 20% of your effort to achieve more with uh, less, right? So this is what the book talks about, and I think it's really, really interesting. 
apart oh. apart from my long winded answer previously, I I just recall one thing, right? The easiest way yeah. to relate eighty twenty principle is to look at your phone and the amount of apps you might have downloaded a <laughs> tons of apps on your phone, but actually you only use about twenty percent of those apps. For example, Facebook, Instagram, email, WhatsApp. Yeah. Messengers and that's yeah. about it. The rest of the eighty yeah. percent of the apps you only use it twenty percent of the time. For example, when I don't know Facebook gone down, and then you start to use Twitter, <laughs> for example. Yeah, exactly. So you know, not only towards effort, work effort, you know, kind of thing, but towards something like what you have explained, Doctor La. I think there's a lot of uh, other things in in life as well that applies. The the eighty twenty rule applies, or the twenty eighty rule applies, right? In in a lot of different time kind of things. Even in marketing, you want to spend. Uh, like what Gary Vee says, seventy nine and also twenty one. I believe is towards um seventy nine percent spending time on the platform that gives you most of the ROI, and then putting twenty nine percent on the other platforms which you can grow on the side, something like that, right? So yeah. it is a lot of different things in in the the world. Um, comes down towards this eighty twenty. Uh, rule again. It won't be a direct twenty eighty, but sometimes fifteen eighty five, maybe ten ninety. But again. This rule applies again and again in a lot of different things that we see every day in life. I I believe in law of big numbers, right? If we if we zoom into a particular instance, it might not follow, but if we put it into a a broader spectrum, it actually still follows eighty twenty. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, the summary of the five books that we're giving away. The five audio books. Now this is going to be available as. An audible audiobook, which you can install the app on your phone, on your desktop, on any device that you have that plays audio, basically, and you can listen to it while you're driving, while you are cooking, while you're exercising, anything at all. When you can have something on your ear, okay. So to get these books, basically, you just have to enter the giveaway by putting in your name and also email, and to get more entries to be in a higher chance to win, um. You can share the the link using the links right here from Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or subscribe to our YouTube channel, subscribe to our Spotify channel called Cerebro by Lead. And I think that's about it, right? So I will share this link inside the comment section below. I will be emailing all our subscribers and also um, our fans following Lead. And we're looking forward to see the five winners that uh, that that ends up at the end of these two weeks. Again, we'll be announcing this on the we're closing this down on on June twenty seven. That's going to be the last time you can actually um, get more entries, and we're going to announce the winner on June twenty eighth. So you have what two weeks to actually um, get into this giveaway, and uh, I wish you all the best. All right, good luck, guys, and see you next time. All right, see you then. Bye bye.